everybody, I'm Cindy Crawford. At House of Style, we get lots of mail asking all about modeling and what models are like and what they do. So today, we've got five top models here to answer all your questions. Christy Turlington began her modeling career with Ford at age 16. Now at 24, and with over 100 covers to her credit, she's considered modeling's most classic beauty. At 15, Naomi Campbell left her mom and London to pursue a modeling career. Seven years later, she's queen of the runway. Her next stop is the music world as she makes her first record and marries U2 bass player Adam Clayton. Lauren Hutton got into modeling at 22 to finance a trip to Africa. She's also been in 27 movies and says her favorite is American Gigolo. I can think of one reason why. At 49 and a half, she's back into modeling and writing her memoirs. Linda Evangelista is the model's model and has been amused to many photographers. Changing her hair color three times in a year is just one of the ways that she has created excitement around herself during her nine years in the business. At 20, Beverly Johnson opened many doors as the first black woman on the cover of Vogue. She's authored a book on beauty and health and is also pursuing an acting career. And then there's me. At 17, I started modeling in Chicago. Three years later, I was in New York and on the cover of Vogue. But one of the real highlights of my career was my big break on MTV. They let me talk. So Lauren, when did you first decide that you wanted to be a model? When I found out that they were making $50 an hour. And Christy, when do you, because you are you probably remember Lauren growing up, when do you remember first being aware of who Lauren Hutton was? R.C. Cola. R.C. Cola? Is that the one where you yeah, found the pool? Sure that one. <laughs> that one I like. Pepsi Light. You know why I love Pepsi Light? Lemon. She fell in the pool and she was so, so skinny. <laughs> <laughs> she had a killer body. She had all days. Yeah. <laughs> and Naomi, when you were young, who do you remember seeing and who did you look up to and who inspired you? I think Iman. I remember seeing her pictures just because I remember seeing Tia Maria ad of a commercial. So she was like passing through real sleek and elegant. And Beverly, when did you, I mean, what made you want to get into it or why did you start? Oh, my, my reasons were the same as Lauren. It was for the money. Yeah, out of a... We were looking for the easy group. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, and someone said, you, you should be a model. And I said, take me to your leader. <laughs> and did you remember who was the one model that you really admired or looked up to? Um, the one that stuck out in my head was Joan Severn, who they say I, said I looked like. So now we're all going to figure out how we all got started, because I think that a lot of people want to know that. And for me, it was, um, there's a local photographer in my small town and he did some pictures of me and just through a process I met an agent in Chicago started out doing underwear ads for Marshall Fields in Chicago that ended up plastered all over my high school mm -hmm. and then um, after I graduated from high school I, I you know and eventually ended up in New York I used to compete horseback riding and somebody was taking pictures at the stable where I kept my horses and took some photos of my sister and I and sent them to an agency that contacted us afterwards. It, when he took the original photos, it wasn't for any professional use. It was just to take a portrait, really. And so from there on, I started working after school and things like that. What about you, little Naomi? I was playing hooky because I didn't want to go home from school right away. And I was hanging out with my school friends in Covent Garden in London. And the lady called Beth came up to me. And I said, oh, he's got his long blonde hair and blue eyes. And she said, do you want to be a model? <laughs> I was, I guess, I know. And you went in? Not right away. My mother wouldn't let me because I had like my exams and stuff. Like a year later, I went How in. How old were you? I was 14. I went in when I was 15. And she took, she used to take her own tests of the models that she would find. And she took pictures of me. My first pictures were in my uniform. In your school uniform? <laughs> yeah, and sent me to L. This woman told me if I ever gave up this crazy idea of becoming a lawyer, to call this woman in New York. She got me an appointment with Glam. Glamour and Vogue magazine. I went up to Glamour and Vogue magazine with my mom, my knee socks, my white gloves, top knot. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you were done. And by the end of the day, they came out and they said, we like you, we want to take her on a 10-day trip. And I said, Can't see, mom, it. You just, well, I walked like a dog, you guys. For like it was nine months, seven months those, before I got my first job. Those were the first. Rejected the, 10 times a day. That was the first. Oh, that was my lucky. first um, shot. But after that, I said, and the next thing you do is you go to all the modeling agencies. So I went to all the modeling agencies, Eileen Ford, and Wilhelmina, and all the big agencies. There was an agency called Black Beauty in that time. Oh, really? right. And yeah. they went, right. eh, nah, right. I don't think so. And at the time, I was too young and stupid 
to say, well, I just got finished shooting for Glamour yeah, and Vogue. Right. right. I've never heard of such a thing. So yeah. they all turned me down, and then, you know, like 10 days later, you know, when the word leaked out, and uh, Eileen and called me. And then they back were all in. sorry. But how did you get down? Do you remember that yet? Mm. I was in a. Miss Teen Niagara Pageant. And Teen Niagara? Linda <laughs> Sapurian. <laughs> yes. Yay! Yeah, yeah, cool. Niagara Falls. <clears throat> and um, I didn't place, but there was a scout in the audience, Bori Lee, who brought me his card afterwards. And didn't you, but didn't you do some school things? I took a course my mom paid for, and um, I did bridal fashion shows where I'd get $20 for the show, including the rehearsals. I never got to be the bride. I was always the bridesmaid. <laughs> um, and I did some local department store um, <coughs> advertising for the newspapers. I got $8 an hour. My mother had to take the day off to drive me there and Didn't gas and day. parking. <laughs> what did they teach this modeling That's school? The You're the first model I've ever, ever met that went to a modeling school. I went to Judy James in London. They teach you <laughs> poses? They teach you they poses? poses. They, they teach you poses? Poses. Obviously, you don't have to have gone to school to be yeah. a big model since, since most of us here didn't. But do you think do you think it's something that's valuable, or do you think that it's really just a waste of money? Rip-offs. Mine, yeah, mine right. also was a self-improvement program, <laughs> and I actually learned my program. etiquette. I know how to, you know, set a table properly, <laughs> how to walk in the door, how to go in and uh, get how in and out in of a, door? how to walk in the door, how to do the <laughs> stairs, <laughs> how to get in and out of a I car think it properly. Builds up self confidence, and I yeah, think that's it's what it's basically it for. But that I think that that I just made nine go sees a day for myself, five agencies. Four agencies turned me down. There were only five agencies in all, all of New York then. This was 65, basically. How many agencies are there here now? 200? Mm, I don't know. Yeah. But a go-see, for those agencies. of you who don't know, yeah. is, is just that. You go and see the people, either mm. photographer or the agency, mm. and, um, and they check you out. And they, and they, they look you at you and they go, they go like this. Mm. And they say, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Hand you back your book, and then you walk out. Exactly. Yeah. It could be so humiliating. Oh. It can be humiliating, but starting out is mostly pounding the pavement. You have to remind people you're out there, otherwise you'll never get hired. Hi, I'm Dana Douglas, and I'm 16, and I'm a model. Sweet little 16, she's got the grown-up blue. Tight dresses and lipstick, she's sporting high heel shoes. really great day running around like crazy and you just don't like show up one day and everyone says you're beautiful darling and then you have a million dollars you know I mean, you have to be willing to sort of give up your personal life and allow yourself to be propelled by this industry is Henry in here where is Henry <laughs> they're shooting right there so Henry's got to be around here someplace Henry is the stylist for Bergdorf um, she books all the model for the catalog Catalogs are really great. They're really pretty. Hi. Ah. Oh, it's looking good, Dana. Yeah, it's getting better. Mom doesn't like anything like this. My dad says stuff like, you know, I just don't want it to come back to haunt you when you're older. But my mom's like, are you crazy? You look great. Thank you, honey. Good to see you again. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming by. Sure. too much don't give up just keep working and hopefully if you're if you're confident in yourself somebody will pick up on you i got signed with some lead through my agency in philadelphia my first real job that i had when i came to new york was working for 17. they built me up a little bit so they again and gave me confidence i'm at 17 I'm waiting to see donna rubenstein and she books all the models and she always takes polaroids for me and i never look good in polaroids <laughs> Yeah. There I am again. So are you planning on staying in New York now for a while? Yeah, I'm here for a while now. Yeah. Thank God. Both looks great. Thank you. Yeah. It's getting there. Oh. Oh, God, I'm not gonna Bye, hon. Bye. So I think it's very important that you have a good uh, manners and that you're friendly and that you don't that you don't freak out if things don't go the way you want them to go. So we're going to Clifford and Will's catalog house. And I've never seen them before, so it could be good for me to get in with them because catalog is great, and you make a lot of money when you do catalog, so I'll be paying my bills. So where are you from? Philadelphia, originally. 
New York now. Are you based out of New York? Yes. Have you done New York? Uh, no, I haven't. You are not going to Europe. Your book looks pretty good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice it was nice to meet you finally. If you just be yourself some, somehow, somewhere, it might fit in to the whole fashion group, or you might change it. Time for me to go home. Gathered my impression of everybody I've met. Now I have to wait and see what their impressions were of me. I hope they were good. Bye. Do you remember when you first started modeling ever being really treated like an object in the sense that they forgot actually that there's like a person inside of the shell? Are you kidding? Of course. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I hate telling you. I've people say, have it move across the room. Yeah. 16 and I did a campaign for a Japanese client and the stylist thought he could come up and touch my can you say breath? <laughs> they were doing a picture of me in a steam bath. And um, I said I was hot and I wanted to come out, and they wouldn't let me out, and I passed out finally. In a what? In a steam bath. Usually my degrading pictures were I think it's just all imagery. For me, it brought on a lot of insecurity. So Naomi, of all the different types of modeling that you do, because I know you do a lot of runway, print, and uh, commercials also, what was your favorite thing to do? I think I like doing, can I say two things? It, I like doing stuff like performances, like shows are fun because they're live and they're spontaneous and anything can happen. And print, I like doing print when I'm a character and I don't look anything like myself. What about you, Lauren? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, for one, never was a big, a big show Showroom. fan, and I know, I mean, do, you, do you like doing shows? I mean, because you do a lot, and you're very good I, I like doing everything, and I'm so glad that there's different things to do, because just doing one, I'll, you know, crack up. I always preferred to, to do print, because that's what I was best that's at. That's what you're good at. And what about you, Christy? I, I, I've always said photography because I'm a photography fan and I feel like it's much more intimate and much, I don't know, it's quieter, it's much, I, I don't know, it, it's, it's nicer, but now that I've been doing a bit more runway, I'm getting used to it and I do like, I do like when it comes. Linda, when did you know that you had made it in the business? I mean, what was that one picture or that one campaign or that one contract that you got that said, I made it, I'm here? I don't think it was one, you know, specific picture, I think that after about, you know, my fourth or fifth Vogue shooting, it started to you feel were more like I was in. Oh, because for me, it was like, I remember I, my first Vogue cover, it was like, I remember it, August 86, it was pink, that was it. It was like, that's the seal of approval well, for me. August isn't a big month. August isn't a big month. <laughs> oh, I know. I didn't say that. I, my vote covers and came much later. Really not true what people say about her. She really is a very nice girl. Yes. Really my is. vote covers came much later. <laughs> like now. What about you, waiting? Did, did you have like one, one thing that was like a moment for you that you felt like that was it? Um, probably when I, I signed a contract with Calvin Klein in 1989. I think that probably, because I think that when I started to get involved in the business, I always thought that they make it seem that contracts are the thing that you want, that everybody wants. It's not necessarily so. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure on you. But too. you think that that's the case, so I actually ended up making a mistake, and I took one before I should have, but... It was oh, a big deal I in the business, it, Well, I thought it was, but... It was, because and it everyone was, was envious. I mean, I'm not... Yeah, everyone was like, well, I mean, that's, a, that's a good setup. It didn't turn out to be something that you were happy with, but still, it was a compliment right. it to was get. something that I wasn't expecting for a good five or ten years, and I got it, you know, two or three and years. Just, what happens is, what I want you to explain is sometimes girls take contracts very early, and it makes them very exclusive with one company, therefore you fade out of the other parts of the business and you end up only doing one client. When I signed Revlon, wouldn't it be great if your skin could always look like it's been on vacation? It can, because it was the first contract there ever was. It colors, but doesn't overcolor. It was com uh, an exclusive contract and I could never, I it was never with anybody again. Yeah, I mean, it was just too. like, shh, well, that was terrible. Everybody. I was always alone and it, it wasn't any fun after That's that. the only thing that I did like about show was seeing everybody. Yeah. People like uh, you guys, supermodels, don't exist in real life whatsoever. We evolved through having the very best of all the, uh, you know, uh, 
female beauty builders work on us for thousands of hours, so we've evolved our own taste out of it. So in fact, you're created. We, we all feel the pressures of not living up to that expectation. Yeah, when people, you know, meet you on a plane or on the street and they say, you look like Linda Evangelista, yeah. and then you say, <laughs> I am, they're, just, they're disappointed. I think models are lucky because it's one of the few careers where you don't have to stifle your femininity and sexuality. You get to use it. And I think a lot of women who are career women have to put that part of themselves aside and just, you know, try to be a man. And we don't have to. Naomi, how much do you use your sexuality? I use as much as God's given me, as much as I have, as, as much as I can. I mean, I, I like to think that I'm very feminine and, um, and I try to, I, I don't think I'm particularly sexy at all in any way. I think I'm kind of gawky, but I like to use what I think that I have. <laughs> I think it's just all imagery and working with a good team and a good photographer, director, can all be faked. What do you think, because there's so much controversy, especially from feminists, about what constitutes a sexy photograph? Because I think all of us like to feel sexy. I mean, I, I certainly do. That makes me have more self-confidence if I feel sexy. But also, you know, I cut a lot of flack, for instance, about doing Playboy or doing a swimsuit calendar, which is basically a, a TNA calendar. And I knew what I was doing. I mean, that's what it was. And and so what do you think is a degrading picture? Do you think there is such a thing as a degrading picture? And what do you think is a sexy picture? Lauren? Usually my degrading pictures were just when I was, would look particularly ugly or something. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little confusing for me sometimes because, you know, I thought the whole idea of feminism was to be able to say, make your own choices. Exactly. And so for me, the degrading pictures that I've done were the ones that I got, like you said, manipulated into doing. When I was 16 and it was for Elle and they said, just take your top off, it's not a big deal. And all of a sudden it comes out in your school and your parents say it and it's a big deal. When you're young and starting out, you're afraid to say no. We do have a choice. We do have a choice. Anyway, we'll be right back to talk about more sexy photos. So don't go away. Naomi, we were discussing sexy photos and also um, just doing a job that may seem sexist uh, that women may criticize you for doing. And I was going to ask you, would you do a job like this? But I know you have. You, like myself, have done Sports Illustrated. Why did you do that? I did it because I think, um, well, Elite wanted me to do it very much and it was first time for me doing it but I have to honestly say that I didn't feel comfortable doing it and out of all the photographs I've ever done if that those were not the pictures that I would consider myself looking sexy and I think being sexy comes from within and that to me was just totally I hate to say it, an ass. Sports <laughs> Illustrated and Cosmo are two that really are kind of criticized by some women's groups. And you've done Cosmo mm -hmm. cover. And why, why would you do that if you know some people consider it to be sexist? I, I don't. I, I think it's funny that people criticize everything. <laughs> it's, ridi it's ridiculous. I don't do it with anything else. I don't understand why people do it. But Cosmo is like the one thing that we do still that we can do it in right now that's still like really glamorous and really sexy. And we do it for fun. Do you think when you do sexy photos that um, having the relationship with the photographer, uh, for me, it makes a big difference? I think the rapport with the photographer is very important, and particularly when you know a photographer is going to do beautiful pictures of you, you can really get turned on because you know you're going to look great. And, um, and you know that, you know, what, what you're doing that he appreciates and that he loves what you're doing, I think that. I think the whole chemistry of that, that entire sitting, from the makeup artist to the hairstylist to yeah, the team federation. You can plot and plan all you want, but there's a lot of other people who have a lot of control over where your career goes. What we do is basically find girls and we try to develop their careers to put them into the market that we already have, introduce them to clients we already have, and make them have a career at modeling. That really is what I like to do, is develop girls and really um, position them well in their career. You're there to deal with every single part of their life, whether it's a personal problem, whether it's boyfriend, mother, um, weight, skin, um, missing a flight, you know. It's not that hard if you feel that a mom is really ready for a Vogue, uh, to send out a Vogue or to Bazaar or to whatever. Um, you have to give it a, a little special um, call for a special appointment, that's all. I do see about uh, 10 to 15 models a day. And if it's a um, great model, I'll introduce her to the editors uh, in the magazine. And 
the editor-in-chief and fashion director. I think once you put a model in the magazine, whether it's Mademoiselle, Vogue, or Elle, um, that exposure alone will create miracles for her. Um, you start getting phone calls from all over, not only the, the country, but the world. And they get the exposure through the magazines and the advertising campaigns follow. I don't overestimate what, what Vogue can do. I mean, we can take a girl and we can groom her and we can give her the best hair, the best makeup and the best clothes, but the camera has to love her. A magazine can launch the career of a, of a model, um, but I think very often it's closer to a photographer than to a magazine that launches the career of a model. The relationship between a model and photographer is, um, well, I mean, it's everything. The thing is this, if you're taking great pictures of a girl and she's looking more beautiful than ever, she's going somewhere, you know? And especially if, as a photographer, you have a forum, um, whether it's one magazine or five magazines, and you're developing this girl and she's being seen extensively through your point of view, you're creating an image of her. If you talk to, to Stephen, I mean, he can create a girl, he can create the hair, he can create the makeup. I mean, he certainly invented Linda at the beginning and, and uh, Christy and now Naomi. I mean, he was the one that, you know, started all the new girls last year saying it's time to change, we have to find the new faces. I'm better at the brain, I'm better at the character. But I prefer for editors to say, listen, you know, I like this girl. When she gets on the job and they confirm it, then let them do her hair. Instead of us creating it ourselves and be wrong. You will send a girl, one new hot girl on a go see, and you'll get five calls saying, Is, what about this girl? And what about the, how come I haven't seen her? And then you'll get jobs, tentative jobs on her chart, which will really come from that one go see. So then you know that that girl is going to be hot because somehow people start to talk about her. I really think it's timing, and if your look is what in at that time, it'll, t it'll take off, it'll happen. So Christy, out of all those people, agents, photographers, who really influenced your career the most? I wouldn't say one particular person. There's been so many at different times or phases of my career, the people that I work with all the time, and then it moves on to another group. There's so many different groups. But Arthur Elgort is a photographer that first took me to do something big I and mean, he took me for American Vogue when I was 16. What about you Naomi? Was there an agent or someone that you could credit with? Yeah, I think I credit the agent that discovered me in London and in New York. Um, the photographer, I guess. I, I credit Stephen myself for just transforming me to someone else. <laughs> what about you Lauren? Deanna Breedlin. I know. I mean basically when I started everybody was about six feet tall and and I wasn't, and I didn't look like them, and we were supposed to get things fixed. And uh, she disliked me and, and asked Richard Avedon to shoot me. And then the second time around <laughs> was Steve Mizell sort of found me and took pictures of me again. And that started anew. I think Stephen is, Mizell is really interesting because he, in, he makes it fun and he makes it feel special. And yeah, he really he's got a great inspires eye. You. Great eye. He brings something out of you. Yeah. Inside I know, but I, he's been very important in your career, right? Yeah. Would you say the most influential or one of? You can't really <laughs> say it. Um, yeah, he's yeah, definitely, definitely been very, very yeah. important in my career. Yeah, it's done beautiful, beautiful pictures of you. And really, I think it's like your work really changed over the course of the time that you were working with him. It did. We kind of grew a bit together. But um, I was around for a long time, and then suddenly it was a combination for me of editors, photographers, magazines. Yeah. Suddenly they had this great idea, let's use her. <laughs> Has have, have anyone ever fallen out of favor with a photographer or a magazine, or felt that they'd fallen out of favor? Doesn't everybody go in and out all the yeah. time? Yeah, but sometimes it's, sometimes it's, it's in and out of style, yeah. and sometimes oh, it's... Sometimes it's well, I, uh, I won't say the name. I don't think it's necessary, but I hate to be told, well, you can't be on the cover of such and such magazine because you were on the cover three years ago, and we just can't have another black model on the cover right now. And I've been told that many, many times, and I, it's been a challenge to me to like work and be I'm determined to break it. But it was very helpful to me, not just for myself, but my whole race. Beverly and Iman, for me, opened many doors, and I wouldn't have been able to do what I do now if it wasn't for you both. Well, the reason why I got that full cover, which was August 1974, <laughs> another August. August, a thin one, yes. a one. You know, being the I first African-American on the cover, because I remember I was we're in Avedon's studio, 
and they were sh shooting Lauren Hutton for a cover try, and she came in there, and she says, what are you doing a cover try on me for? Why don't you do it on this beautiful woman? Yeah, I said, look at her. And Polly <laughs> Mellon. They got the idea. They went, boy, they and did. And there, I could see the light bulbs. No, but you kept there. insisting, insisting. It's a freaking crazy. There's something Lauren and I have in common, and you talked about it a little bit before, is that we have flaws that all of a sudden became <coughs> our trademark. So Trademarks. When you yeah. started in the business, was there pressure for you to get your teeth changed? I think Absolutely. When you're young and trying out your womanhood, you're, you're trying to imitate whoever are the standards at the time, but don't eliminate your own special traits because if we had, God knows what would have happened. And I was told I would be taken if they uh, fixed my teeth, cut my nose. No. You were told if I you cut your mole. to fix my scar, which I actually like very yeah. much, and it's part of me. Yeah. It's going to stay there. Yeah. It's, been, it's been so sweet that a few young girls have come up to me, and they have a mole on their face or whatever. And I'm sure it's the same thing for you with young black girls. It's like I legitimized or made it OK and made it even beautiful to have a mole on yes. your face. I actually think it can be a very important job, this job. Because, in fact, we can sort of hold up something. Um, but don't you think what we hold up sometimes is very unrealistic? Um, you know, we, we yes, were given, we were given very good packages. A lot of it is fantasy magazines, you know, when you've got ten hair pieces on your head and green eyebrows. And but they don't know that. They never say in the magazine that she was sitting here for five hours and she squeezed in this dress and her boobs are taped up yeah. and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but what, why do you great. think the standards of beauty change so much? I mean, what is it? Is it just there are lots of times of beautiful people, lots of different kinds. A person with power decides that fat's okay or shortness is okay or baldness is yeah. okay. But look, they've never They'll decided that. They'll make it that. into a trend. I mean, look in uh, Titian's day, you know, but in the 1300s or 1400s, you'd, you'd go have 12 desserts before you had a bookie. <laughs> Don't you think not being perfect is more acceptable today than it used to be? I hope so, and I hope that it evolves it even more so. But it let's is. take a look at how standards of beauty have changed over time. <laughs> between me and my Calvins? Nothing. So Linda, all the papers and fashion magazines are talking about a new look. How, how, what do you think this new look is? How would you describe it? They call them the waif. <laughs> They come to me and they say, but you've lost so much weight. And I mean, I, <laughs> you've always been. I fluctuate five pounds up or down, but I'm always the same weight. And they think that I'm thin now because I'm trying to catch Copy up to the these weight. little girls. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they're adorable. I think they go with all these little, well, they went with the grunge. Grunge is already tired. Now it's that romantic thing. They're working in that. But um, I'm, I'm working every day. I don't see you. You're working every day. I mean, so what is the new look? I don't know. That's They're describing it as the antithesis of what, of kind of what we are. We are. <laughs> These young girls, they have like stringy hair, no makeup, kind of this blank expression into the camera. And so, what does that mean for us? But what does that mean for us? <laughs> we can all kind of do that, and then when it passes, like in two months or six months, basically by next season. Okay. Well, I'm sure it will. Okay. Usually things last about a year. And if that happens, then we'll be able to do, if they go back into the 20s or the 50s or the 40s, I think it's important to have range as a model, and you shouldn't be able to have just one facet. I mean, it, that's why I think that all of us have been around for a long time is because you can do different periods and when they get confused like they always do the powers that be and they they don't know what era to copy or to take from it's important that the, the girls that they're working with can go into each of those areas also I think it's very important to, to do other things and, and to yeah. you know 
get other interests like Naomi's doing an album and you know yeah, you the exercise tapes basketball. and you know when that client stops calling you you'll know that you know when you have income coming in somewhere else <laughs> that's, what, that's what we hope that they just the phones don't cut off all one day but it's slowly gradual. they gradually no, but I think that we all hope to be able to be to the point that you can make your decision before they make the decision you know, sort of, that you're happy doing other things, or you can sort of start to feel, I think, when you... Yeah, you sense something. Yeah, but intuition. come on, how old are you, Naomi? 22. 22. <laughs> you're not sensing anything oh. yet. <laughs> you're, 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 you haven't even started. We're, we're, we're going to see you around. I've already been around no, nine I feel like years. You've got on 50. Much longer than I even... <laughs> but you back see, you keep growing as women. In fact, your yeah. faces will change. Exactly. And people are interested in seeing what kind of women you turn into. Mm -hmm. They're interested in seeing what kind of woman I turn into. Mm -hmm. I make much more money now modeling Me too. than I did at the height. Me too. <laughs> <laughs>